All right. Welcome back, friends. Uh, we are at Old Berg. As I mentioned earlier today, we're going to try out a bream spot at Old Berg here. Now, we're a little early. We're probably about five in-game hours away from bream time. So let's... Um, Let's see if we can't find a find a carp or two while we're waiting. Ten forty four, clip eighteen. Um, yeah, it's just going to be around this corner, right? So what I'm thinking is, let's make sure that we know where this is. Yeah, it should be just down here. Are the numbers going back up? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's just going to be a little farther down into that five meter hole, it looks like. So any of these spots may be good for carp, although I kind of like this spot up here at the top. We're just going to have to figure out, do we keep the size one hook on there like we would at bear or amber? Or should we do a little smaller hook, see if we can't get a little better bite rate? And the, 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 um, the carp are certainly going to, could be a little smaller here. So let's change this to let's just go to a sinking boilie here um, it actually matters what kind of let's do banana banana 20 with banana strike dip and uh, I think we want to put one like over there, not real far. You know, the other thing, it really frustrates me that we can't look at um, weekly stuff per lake. That would just be so, so awesome garlic dough garlic dough huh I mean we could change one of these to just straight all right let's actually do pop-up on this one I think I still have um, Uh, was I doing 27 on this? I don't think we would have been doing 27 if we had, but I don't think we were doing 21 either. I don't remember what setup we had on this. Well, for now, let's just put, this is old Berg. We're actually probably okay putting um, braided line on there. We'll keep the large one carp hook and let's do do I have a corn that goes with banana I'm sure I do um, all right banana 20 pop up and Let's 
let's see, tutti frutti, oh, banana flavor. We don't have a lot of time, but it's worth just seeing if we can get anything here. And then just to make it a little simpler, let's just do banana on this as well. I think I want to go with size four hook on this one. Don't we have a carp hook that's a four? Yeah. And banana strike and banana PVA. And on this one, I actually like to, I mean, actually two things. One going straight out towards the shore but also just kind of like right over here. All these spots can be really good for tench, uh, but we're also hoping now um, for carp. But you can certainly catch tench, you can use float fishing in this area and catch all the roaches and gibbles and stuff like that sometimes. So we're just doing a little a little bonus stuff here. Now, one thing that's interesting about the bream here, if you look at weekly bream, you'll see that garlic dough is definitely getting it done here. Trophy garlic dough bream at Oldberg. But what is also interesting to check is the white bream. Garlic dough, same bait. But to get ideal white bream, you would have a little different, oh, look at that. You'd have a little different setup, a um, little smaller hook, a little lighter line. So we may put one bream line to try to target, and that's a grass carp, a nice grass carp for Oldberg. I like that. So this is encouraging. Again, I was trying to figure out like, what could you do while fishing for bream during the day at Oldberg? And if you have the equipment for it, trying to get some common or grass carp or whatever might, might be worthwhile. Now it looked like it looked like from the weeklies that have been caught on the Japanese server that what we could do is get those feeder rods that I was talking about, set them up for a little stronger than what our bream rods are set up for and use garlic dough to go for carp. I mean, we could fish with garlic dough on size four hooks right here during the day and then do the bream at night. All right. Let me see what my audio is on. I had it turned down a little bit for um, 
trolling Corey, I think. All right, we're close enough to, uh, to Bream time that I'm going to move us very soon. Ooh, another bite over here on the left side. So if we were going to come back here or stay here, I'd probably throw a second line over in this general area. And that's another grass carp, which, you know, it's kind of making me think that um, the grass carp are here, but the, the commons might not be here. And if, if any of you all have been fishing at Old Berg and know of a, a nice spot for commons here, I'd love to know it. Uh, in case I end up spending a good bit of time on uh, Bream at night, it'd be nice to have a reliable reliable common carp location during the day. Which sometimes carp do well at night too, but you know, if the Bream are really popping off, it might be worth focusing them at night and um and all that i think we're going to 1044 here i like with bream spots especially when i'm first trying them out to set up around 1800 because then you can really see the change um typically at about 20 to 22 somewhere in there the um size will dramatically change all right clip 18 so let's see what makes sense i think just like um 10 i think kind of into that five meter hole um too far to the right is going to be out of the thing at least towards the five meter hole and you know just because you've heard clip 18 don't always assume that that's the best um, as you get dialed on in on a spot, you might find that clip 20 works just as good or even better for you, but it's good to have a starting point. And the starting point for us is going to be clip 18. Yeah, I kind of want to go a little more that direction some. And I need to make sure I'm getting full casts on these boonisons. I'm used to using those carp rods where 18 meters would be a 10% cast. All right, so this is the one that we're going to say, why don't we go with, let's go with mono line. Um, We'll use a 7.5 mono line and let's put a 6.4 liter. So a little smaller and let's go with a size 12 hook and let's put garlic dough in there, which means we're going to have to just be more careful on this one. What we're hoping is that we might get a trophy white bream, but the truth is we'll still catch regular bream. But, and again, that didn't go full cast, but we won't have the power to get them in as well. And if we get a trophy regular bream, we could even be in trouble. It's not impossible to bring in a trophy bream on, on this line, but it won't be super fun. Okay. I'm going to just full cast this. I'll probably start doing 100% actually. Um, or 90%, I'm sorry. All right, so they should start off pretty small here. But they should increase in size in the next in-game hour or so. Now, I don't know for sure that the white bream are biting in this spot with the regular bream, but I got a message from Wrangler who was trying this spot earlier, and uh, that seemed to be his experience was that, in fact, I think he might have even been catching 
better white bream than regular bream, but we'll see. We're still getting a really small variety right now. So this will show you, hopefully, give you an idea of when you should switch from whatever you're fishing during the day to bream if this spot does in fact end up being good. Okay, so see we have the smaller leader and we caught our first decent bream here. And it's only 1.8, but but according to what our leader was doing, you would think it was a a three a three kilo one. Golly, I'm having a hard time getting that out very far. Did I set that um did I set the uh, clip right on that one? We'll have to check that. So far, the bite rate looks very promising. But there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I've been fishing, you know, bream for a long time. And there's a lot to get to figure out a bream spot on how good is it and really give it a rating. How long is the window of time that you're getting the markers is important. The frequency of bites is important. The chance of catching trophies is also pretty important. All right, they are getting a little larger here. I might try to stop overcasting it. I don't like that pop back we're getting or the extreme pop back. It's so small I thought we might not have actually had a fish on there. All right, so the clip is set to 18. So let's see what like 80% looks like. Still pretty strong pop back. So maybe 75%. And remember, if you're using pickers, your casting strength is going to be different. Your casting strength is also going to be different according to what skill points you have where. I feel like this line might have a fish on there, but it may not completely be on there yet. All three of them have some sort of activity going, though. That's a roach. All right, that was 71% and that was much better. Not near as much bounce back. clip was wrong so that clip was on 13 I knew there was something off about it I sort of feel bad that in my last video I spent time complaining about people asking for hey it's our first in that our first marker oh second marker it's now 20.51. Uh, I feel bad about complaining about people asking for handouts. I should not complain about that. Um, I do think constructive criticism is appropriate. I, I, one thing I like about this community is going back to the very beginning of when this English servers came out and people started playing this game and I eventually joined, not from day one, but I was fairly early. There's been this sort of understanding that, you know, good manners in the game is to not just ask people for free stuff. Now, as you get to know people, the community has always been very generous 
in sharing things with each other, not only spots, locations, but even sharing baits and equipment at times. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people willing to give gear that they have out leveled uh, to someone who's lower level to help them get a start. All right, there's our first white bream. So it's a very generous community, but the community has also always been good about setting up what is good manners in terms of uh, not just asking for handouts. So for what that's worth, I wanted to um, I wanted to return to that idea just briefly. It is possible that many of the newer players haven't had the chance to interact with people in the community and don't know that that's the culture around the community in this game is to be respectful in the way that you're asking for things. And not just going around asking for handouts from people you don't know. I'm going to stop trying to set it doing something weird with the line so I'm just gonna stop doing that all right so remember this is our 6.4 liter and there's no way around this we're gonna catch marker bream and it's just gonna be a lot of work you may decide it's not worth doing this my hope in doing this with a size 12 hook and a little smaller leader is that we might have a ch chance of like you know landing a trophy white bream and still catch a few marker bream um, but we'll see. It may not be worth the hassle with how good the bite rate seems to be. That's a decent bream right there. We're also tempting the, oh, I'm, I was supposed to stop doing that. We're tempting the trophy from getting on one of our appropriate lines and possibly risking getting spooled on the third line. Yeah, it looks like 60% cast is just over the, the distance, so it's good. Okay. So, let's just look at bream by weight. Two money bream, and what I mean is that like once you see the color differentiation then you know you're getting into like the size bream you want to be at in terms of like add, helping it add up for silver. This small, even though it's a marker, it's worth significantly less or typically, or at least it used to be. I guess we'll look at prices this time. It's been a while. They have adjusted prices some since then, but Hopefully this is a white. So we're now at 22.34. And we would hope, oh, I also meant to put white bream mix on this line. That's one thing I did not do. Hopefully I'll remember next fish to do that. Again, trying to target the white bream specifically with that third line. can pretty much tell a trophy from coloration. I don't think this will be a trophy, but it's not. But I wanted to make sure before I was too risky in pulling the way I was pulling it in. That's a nice one though. 3.9. 
All right, just for science, so that you don't have to go through this, let me throw white bream mix on here and see. Because right, the other thing we might find is with the smaller leaders, we might catch bigger regular bream. It's not what we want, but it might be the way it goes. That is kind of, oh, there's a white. That is kind of how it's looking at the moment. But it's early. We'll keep seeing how this goes. So the difference in the first two lines with 9.8 fluorocarbon line, size eight hook and bream mix, and the third line with 6.4 fluorocarbon liter, a smaller hook size 12 and white bream mix but we just put the white bream mix on there before it was regular bream mix. And I have certainly caught really big bream on white bream mix. I've certainly caught really, really big white bream on regular bream mix. So that doesn't always hold true, but you know, if you're trying to target one or the other, it's probably worth experimenting with it. So first fish after we put the white bream mix on is a white bream. So what's the next thing we need to do is switch another line, one of these two to the smaller setup, but keep the bream mix on, right? I think that's actually what we should do. do it with this one 6.8 line with the 6.4 fluorocarbon liter uh, let's keep the 8 hook for now oh I switched the line so that caused the uh, clip to go away I don't like that third line pulling like that over there. I'm afraid it's gonna snap. I think there's also a fish on the second line. All right, we're good. Okay. This is a nice one, and this is on the big full 9.8 fluorocarbon line. And that's a nice bream right there. More of those, please. seven markers, five plus sizes. A lot less waiting when you're fishing for bream compared to the big carp, huh? So 
So remember, this is the new smaller line. Uh, sorry, smaller leader, but still the size eight hook. I've never found personally that going with a 12 hook leads to larger bream. For me, size eight seems like a nice sweet spot for bream. But things do change over time and, and all that, so. So no marker white yet. Which is unfortunate. I think it's arguable that, in fact, I think what we'll try here, we're going to go even smaller hook with the garlic dough and try to hit some nice whites. I think 12 is actually too big for the whites. So let's go with a. Um, Let's go with a 15. Like that's so small, you're, I think you're getting into territory that might even target the the whites even better. And, and I wouldn't be opposed to putting an 18 on there, to be honest with you, but. There we go. That's what I like to see. Big bream coming in on size eight hooks with 9.8 fluorocarbon line. Because I feel that's still the best bream setup. But we got to test it all. You know what? Let me see something. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I really don't like it when that glitch happens. I think it's still on there. I think the ground bait is still on there, but it's not visually showing me it's on there it's pretty irritating if this is a white bream it's a nice one so I think if I was doing this again I kind of want to stop playing around with changing everything on this third line, but I think if I was doing it again, I might go to like an 18 hook for a little while and see, see if we really start getting some nice white bream in on that size. Just on one line though, on two lines, I want to be catching these marker regular breams. Okay. Fifty percent cast is pretty much perfect for me. I think there's a fish on here. Nope, I was wrong. Thought I saw enough movement to suggest that there was, but ten markers with seven oversized. We've seen that the common carp are biting the garlic dough. So that's another risk you run by getting smaller and smaller line or leaders. Is that you're going to get totally crushed by a common carp. You would hope that out here in the middle of the lake isn't going to be a huge common carp spot. But I have caught common carp here and in weirder places than here before. Did 
we just uh, jinx ourselves? It's not really running like a bream, is it? Although I will say, if it's getting tired that fast, that's not a common carp. We can get it to calm down we'll walk it in a little bit but or walk it down but all right it is coming in right now we just want to keep the momentum as long as we can I'm not sure. I don't think it's fought long enough to be a common carp. But I'm not sure that it's a bream either. Doesn't look like a bream, does it? What the heck have we caught? It's a little grass carp. Okay. Well, everyone beware. Uh, I would go back to 9.8 liter. If there's even the slightest chance of grass carp here, then... Then there's no point in having 6.4 liters. Just that extra bit of... Uh, extra bit of power will help protect you a little bit. That was frightening, wasn't it? For a minute, I thought, oh, we've got a trophy. But as soon as it was started running like it was, I just gave up on that idea. But a good trophy will run. It'll fight you for a little bit, and you'll think, what, what is this? But not quite like that. say you can justify so 
13 markers, 10 of them. Chunky monkeys. You can uh, justify going all the way till like 8, even 9 a.m., but you're going to start seeing the small ones mix in again pretty soon. I mean, you can tell like with with a few exceptions once we got to a certain time pretty much catching nice ones almost every fish Now the grass carp didn't bite in the middle of the night. So another way you could protect yourself if you are using smaller leaders or lighter gear is um, stop fishing by 4 a.m. Pretty good. Someone just left a message on one of my videos about a really fun wild carp spot where you also catch sturgeon. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so sounds like Octuba, but I don't know what coordinates they're talking about. So I was asking them if they mind sharing the exact spot because we could check that out. I also hear that there's some fun common carp spots at uh, Mosquito. Might check that out. You know, it'd be possible to do a, because how low the travel cost is especially, some daytime, early daytime common carp fishing at Mosquito, if that really is a good location, and then bounce over to Old Berg to hit some... Uh, Some more bream but if you can get dialed in on some of these bream spots i mean you can just really make some good silver and because it's nighttime fishing it still leaves you open to still do some fun things during the day as well like chase cafe orders or whatever it is you want to do that could be fun to go for the burbot here but right now there's a bream order so the smallest one that'll fit, oh, how many is it? Three pieces. So that gives us 33 silver just for three pieces of bream. And no grass carp order, which is what we've been catching a lot of today. But those burbot orders, if there's a good burbot spot, that'd be nice. Um, 
so funny. All right, so what was the last grass carp we caught? All right, let's do these two. That's 24 silver. We caught these, remember, at the beginning. But then in that bream spot, 75 silver. So we did, what, well over 100 silver, counting the two grass carp and the bream order. Well, just the bream order itself, that's well over 100. So again, nice, constant silver. Um, it's just really fun. Okay. Let's wrap that up. I'm going to work on some more fishing stuff tonight. I'm, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to stream it or if I'm just going to work on videos. Um, but either way, you should expect some more content one way or another. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you soon. Peace out.